Nun, Wikipedia article audio. A nun is a member of a religious community of women, typically living under vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience in the enclosure of a monastery. Buddhism Thailand Taiwan Tibet Japan Christianity Roman Catholic Distinction between a nun and a religious sister United States Canada Eastern Orthodox Protestantism Anglicanism Lutheranism Methodism In popular culture Gallery Notes Catholics While in common usage the terms nun and religious sister are often used interchangeably, they represent different forms of religious life. Nuns are historically associated with living an ascetic life of prayer and contemplation in a monastery or convent, while religious sisters are devoted to an active vocation of prayer and charitable works in areas such as education and health care. Communities of nuns or religious sisters exist in numerous religious traditions, including Christianity, Jainism, Buddhism, Taoism, and Hinduism. In the Buddhist tradition, female monastics are known as bhikkhuni, and take additional vows, compared to male monastics, they are most common in Mahayana Buddhism, but have more recently become more prevalent in other traditions. Within Christianity, they are found in Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, Anglican, and Lutheran traditions among others. Examples include the monastic order of St. Clare founded in 1212 in the Franciscan tradition, or the Missionaries of Charity founded in 1950 by Mother Teresa to care for persons living in grave poverty. All Buddhist traditions have nuns, although their status is different among Buddhist countries. The Buddha is reported to have allowed women into the Sangha only with great reluctance, predicting that the move would lead to Buddhism's collapse after 500 years, rather than the 1,000 years it would have enjoyed otherwise. Fully ordained Buddhist nuns have more Padamakha rules than the monks. The important vows are the same, however. As with monks, there is quite a lot of variation in nuns' dress and social conventions between Buddhist cultures in Asia. Chinese nuns possess the full Bhikkhuni ordination, Tibetan nuns do not. In Theravada countries it is generally believed that the full ordination lineage of Bhikkhunis died out, though in many places they wear the saffron-colored robes, observing only ten precepts like novices. In Thailand, a country which never had a tradition of fully ordained nuns, there developed a separate order of non-ordained female renunciates called Meiji. However, some of them have played an important role in Dhamma practitioners' community. There are in Thai forest tradition foremost nuns such as Meiji Kaiho Xian Glam, the founder of the nunnery of Baan Hawai Sa, who is believed by some to be enlightened as well as Yupasika Ki Nanayan. At the beginning of the 21st century, some Buddhist women in Thailand have started to introduce the Bhikkhuni Sangha in their country as well, even if public acceptance is still lacking. Damananda Bhikkhuni, formerly the successful academic scholar Dr. Chatsamarn Kabilsingh, established a controversial monastery for the training of Buddhist nuns in Thailand. The relatively active roles of Taiwanese nuns were noted by some studies. Researcher Charles Brewer-Jones estimates that from 1952 to 1999, when the Buddhist Association of the Rock organized public ordination, female applicants have outnumbered males by about 3 to 1. He adds, Wei Yi Cheng studied luminary order in southern Taiwan. 
Chang reviewed earlier studies which suggest that Taiwan's Zhejiao tradition has a history of more women participation, and that the economic growth and the loosening of family restriction allowed more women to become nuns. Based on studies of luminary order, Chang concluded that the monastic order in Taiwan was still young and gave nuns more rooms of development, and more mobile believers helped the order. The August 2007 International Congress on Buddhist Women's Role in the Sangha, with the support of HHXIVTH Dalai Lama, reinstated the Jelong lineage, having been lost, in India and Tibet, for centuries. Jelongma ordination requires the presence of ten fully ordained people keeping exactly the same vows. Because ten nuns are required to ordain a new one, the effort to establish the Dharmaguptaka Bhikkhu tradition has taken a long time. It is permissible for a Tibetan nun to receive Bhikkhuni ordination from another living tradition, e.g., in Vietnam. Based on this, Western nuns ordained in Tibetan tradition, like Thubten Khadran, took full ordination in another tradition. The ordination of monks and nuns in Tibetan Buddhism distinguishes three stages, Rabjung Ma, Get Shul Ma and Ge Long Ma. The clothes of the nuns in Tibet are basically the same as those of monks, but there are differences between novice and Ge Long robes. Hokji in 747 was established by the consort of the emperor. It took charge of provincial convents, performed ceremonies for the protection of the state, and became the site of pilgrimages. Aristocratic Japanese women often became Buddhist nuns in the pre-modern period. Originally it was thought they could not gain salvation because of the five hindrances, which said women could not attain Buddhahood until they changed into men. However, in 1249, twelve women received full ordination as priests. A Catholic nun is a woman who has taken vows. A major traditional distinction between a nun and a religious sister is that nuns are members of enclosed religious orders and take solemn religious vows while sisters do not live in the papal enclosure and formerly took vows called simple vows. Also, as monastics, nuns commit themselves to the full daily recitation of the liturgy of the hours throughout the day in church, usually in a solemn manner. As a result of this way of life, for those making this commitment, they were formerly distinguished within the monastic community as choir nuns, as opposed to lay sisters, who were entrusted with the upkeep of the monastery or even running errands outside the cloister. This last task, though, is still often entrusted to women, called externs, who live in the monastery, but outside the enclosure. They were usually either oblates or members of the associated third order, often wearing a different habit or the standard woman's attire of the period. In the Roman Catholic tradition, there are a large number of religious institutes of nuns and sisters, each with its own charism or special character. In general, when a woman enters a convent, monastery, or abbey, she first undergoes a period of testing the life for six months to two years called a postulancy. If she, and the order, determine that she may have a vocation to the life, she receives the habit of the order and undertakes the novitiate, a period of living the life of the religious institute without yet taking vows. Upon completion of this period she may take her initial, temporary vows. Temporary vows last one to three years, typically and will be professed for not less than three years and not more than six. Finally, she will petition to make her perpetual profession, taking permanent, solemn vows. In the branches of the Benedictine tradition, nuns take vows of stability, obedience, and conversion of life. In other traditions, 
such as the poor clares and the Dominican nuns, they take the threefold vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Most orders of nuns not listed here follow one of these two patterns, with some orders taking an additional vow related to the specific work or character of their order. Cloistered nuns observe papal enclosure rules, and their nunneries typically have walls separating the nuns from the outside world. The nuns rarely leave though they may receive visitors in specially built parlors, often with either a grill or half wall separating the nuns from visitors. They are usually self-sufficient, earning money by selling jams, candies or baked goods by mail order, or by making liturgical items. They often undertake contemplative ministries that is, a community of nuns is often associated with prayer for some particular good or supporting the missions of another order by prayer. Yet religious sisters can also perform this form of ministry, e.g., the Marinole missionary sisters have small houses of contemplative sisters, some in mission locations, who pray for the work of the priests, brothers and other sisters of their congregation, the sister disciples of the Divine Master are also cloistered sisters who pray in support of their sister congregation, the daughters of St. Paul in their media ministry. A canoness is a nun who corresponds to the male equivalent of canon. The origin and rules of monastic life are common to both. As with the canons, differences in the observance of rule gave rise to two types, the canonis regular, taking the traditional religious vows, and the secular canonis, who did not take vows and thus remained free to own property and leave to marry, should they choose. This was primarily a way of leading a pious life for the women of aristocratic families and generally disappeared in the modern age except for the modern Lutheran convents of Germany. A nun who is elected to head her religious house is termed an abbess if the house is an abbey, a prioress if it is a monastery, or more generically may be referred to as Mother Superior and styled Reverend Mother. The distinction between abbey and monastery has to do with the terms used by a particular order or by the level of independence of the religious house. Technically, a convent is any home of a community of sisters or, indeed, of priests and brothers, though this term is rarely used in the United States. The term monastery is often used by communities within the Benedictine family, and convent is often used of the houses of certain other institutes. The traditional dress for women in religious communities consists of a tunic which is tied around the waist with a cloth or leather belt. Over the tunic some nuns wear a scapular which is a garment of long wide piece of woolen cloth worn over the shoulders with an opening for the head. Some wear a white wimple and a veil, the most significant and ancient aspect of the habit. Some orders such as the Dominicans wear a large rosary on their belt. Benedictine abbesses wear a cross or crucifix on a chain around their neck. After the Second Vatican Council, many religious institutes chose in their own regulations to no longer wear the traditional habit and did away with choosing a religious name. Catholic Church Canon Law states, religious are to wear the habit of the institute, made according to the norm of proper law as a sign of their consecration and as a witness of poverty. During the first millennium, nearly all religious communities of men and women were dedicated to prayer and contemplation. These monasteries, abbeys, or convents were built in remote locations or were separated from the world by means of a cloister. The mendicant orders, founded in the 13th century, combined a life of prayer and dedication to God with active works of preaching, hearing confessions, and service to the poor, and members of these orders are known as friars rather than monks. At that time, and into the 17th century, church custom did not allow women to leave the cloister if they had taken religious vows. 
female members of the mendicant orders continued to observe the same enclosed life as members of the monastic orders. Originally, the vows taken by profession in any religious institute approved by the Holy See were classified as solemn. This was declared by Pope Boniface VIII. The situation changed in the 16th century. In 1521, two years after the Fourth Lateran Council had forbidden the establishment of new religious institutes, Pope Leo X established a religious rule with simple vows for those tertiaries attached to existing communities who undertook to live a formal religious life. In 1566 and 1568, Pope Pius V rejected this class of congregation, but they continued to exist and even increased in number. After at first being merely tolerated, they afterwards obtained approval. Finally in the 20th century, Pope Leo XIII recognized as religious all men and women who took simple vows. Their lives were oriented not to the ancient monastic way of life, but more to social service and to evangelization, both in Europe and in mission areas. Their number had increased dramatically in the upheavals brought by the French Revolution and subsequent Napoleonic invasions of other Catholic countries, depriving thousands of religious of the income that their communities held because of inheritances and forcing them to find a new way of living the religious life. But members of these new associations were not recognized as religious until Pope Leo XIII's Constitution Condidia Cristo of December 8, 1900. The 1917 Code of Canon Law reserved the term nun for religious women who took solemn vows or who, while being allowed in some places to take simple vows, belonged to institutes whose vows were normally solemn. It used the word sister exclusively for members of institutes for women that it classified as congregations, and for nuns and sisters jointly it used the Latin word religiosi. The same religious order could include both nuns and sisters, if some members took solemn vows and others simple vows. The new legal code of the Catholic Church which was adopted in 1983, however, remain silent on this matter. Whereas previously, the code distinguished between orders and congregations, the code refers simply to religious institutes. Nuns and sisters played a major role in American religion, education, nursing and social work since the early 19th century. In Catholic Europe, convents were heavily endowed over the centuries, and were sponsored by the aristocracy. There were very few rich American Catholics, and no aristocrats. Religious orders were founded by entrepreneurial women who saw a need and an opportunity, and were staffed by devout women from poor families. The numbers grew rapidly, from 900 sisters in 15 communities in 1840, 50,000 in 170 orders in 1900 and 135,000 in 300 different orders by 1930. Starting in 1820, the sisters always outnumbered the priests and brothers. Their numbers peaked in 1965 at 180,000 then plunged to 56,000 in 2010. Many women left their orders, and few new members were added. Since the Second Vatican Council the sisters have directed their ministries more to the poor, working more directly among them and with them. Nuns have played an important role in Canada, especially in heavily Catholic Quebec. Outside the home, Canadian women had few domains which they controlled. An important exception came with Roman Catholic nuns, especially in Quebec. Stimulated by the influence in France, the popular religiosity of the Counter-Reformation, new orders for women began appearing in the 17th century. 
In the next three centuries women opened dozens of independent religious orders, funded in part by dowries provided by the parents of young nuns. The orders specialized in charitable works, including hospitals, orphanages, homes for unwed mothers, and schools. Early Modern Spain Choir nuns, usually from elite families, held office, could vote within the convent, teachers of novices, and were given the opportunity to read and write, lay nuns, lower class women, assigned tasks related to the labor of the convent, were not given the opportunities to read and write and paid a lower dowry. Traditional celibate religious orders and communities, members take a vow of celibacy and follow a common rule of life. They may be enclosed and contemplative or open and engaged in apostolic works, dispersed communities, these are orders or communities whose members, whilst taking vows, do not live together in community. In most cases the members are self-supporting and live alone, but follow the same rule of life, and meet together frequently in assemblies often known as chapter meetings. In some cases some members may share a common life in very small groups of two or three, acknowledged communities, these communities live a traditional Christian life, including the taking of vows, but the traditional vows are adapted or changed. In many cases these communities admit both single and married persons as members, requiring celibacy on the part of those who are single, an unfailing commitment to their spouse on the part of married members. They also amend the vow of poverty, allowing personal possessions, but requiring high standards of tithing to the community and the wider church. These communities often have residential elements, but not full residential community life, as this would be incompatible with some elements of married family life, other communities. This group contains communities that are ecumenical or that belong to non-Anglican churches that have entered into relationships of full communion with the Anglican Church. Prior to women becoming nuns during early modern Spain, aspired nuns underwent a process. The process was ensured by the Council of Trent in which King Philip II, adopted within Spain. King Philip II acquired the aid of the Hieronymite order to ensure that monasteries abided by the decrees of the Council of Trent. The Spanish king's adoption to Trent changed the way in which female monasteries and nuns would live. One edict of the Council of Trent was that female monasteries be enclosed in order to limit nuns' relationship with the secular world. Enclosure of monasteries during this time was associated to chastity. Another decree issued by the Council of Trent was that religious devotion be true and voluntary. A male clergy would ask the aspiring nuns if whether or not their vocation was true and voluntary in order to ensure no enforced conversion. To be considered as a nun, one must have the economic means to afford the convent dowry. During this time convent dowries were affordable, compared to secular marriages between a man and a woman. Typically during early modern Spain a large number of nuns were from elite families who had the means to afford the convent dowry and the maintenance allowances, which were annual fees. Monasteries were economically supported through the convent dowries. Convent dowries could be waived if the aspiring nun had an artistic ability benefiting the monastery. Once an aspiring nun has entered the convent and has the economic means to afford the dowry she undergoes the process of apprenticeship known as the novitiate period. The novitiate period typically lasts one two years and during this time the aspiring nun lives the life of a nun without taking the official vows. As she lives in the convent she is closely monitored by the other women in the community to determine if her vocation is genuine this would be officially determined by a vote from the choir nuns. 
If the aspiring nun passes the scrutiny of the women of the religious community she then can make her solemn vows. Prior to making the vows the family of the nun is expected during this time to pay the convent dowry. Nuns were also expected to denounce their inheritance and property rights. Religious Class Distinctions in the Eastern Orthodox Church there is no distinction between a monastery for women and one for men. In Greek, Russian, and other Eastern European languages, both domiciles are called monasteries and the ascetics who live therein are monastics. In English, however, it is acceptable to use the terms nun and convent for clarity and convenience. The term for an abbess is the feminine form of abbot Greek, hegumeni, Serbian, Russian, comma. Orthodox monastics do not have distinct orders as in Western Christianity. Orthodox monks and nuns lead identical spiritual lives. There may be slight differences in the way a monastery functions internally but these are simply differences in style dependent on the abbess or abbot. The abbess is the spiritual leader of the convent and her authority is absolute there has always been spiritual equality between men and women in the Orthodox Church. Abbots and abbesses rank in authority equal to bishops in many ways and were included in ecumenical councils. Orthodox monasteries are usually associated with a local synod of bishops by jurisdiction, but are otherwise self-governing. Abbesses hear confessions and dispense blessings on their charges, though they still require the services of a presbyter to celebrate the divine liturgy and perform other priestly functions, such as the absolution of a penitent. Orthodox monastics, in general have little or no contact with the outside world, especially family. The pious family whose child decides to enter the monastic profession understands that their child will become dead to the world and therefore be unavailable for social visits. There are a number of different levels that the nun passes through in her profession. After the Protestant Reformation, some monasteries in Lutheran lands and convents adopted the Lutheran Christian faith. Other convents, especially those in reformed areas, closed after the Reformation, with some sisters deciding to marry. A modern resurgence of the early Christian deaconess office for women began in Germany in the 1840s and spread through Scandinavia, Britain and the United States, with some elements of the religious life, such as simple vows, and a daily obligation of prayer. Lutherans were especially active, and within both Lutheranism and Anglicanism some deaconesses formed religious communities, with community living, and the option of life vows in religion. The modern movement reached a zenith about 1910, then slowly declined as secularization undercut religiosity in Europe, and the professionalization of nursing and social work offered better career opportunities for young women. A small movement still exists, and its legacy is seen in the names of numerous hospitals. The example of the deaconess communities eventually led to the establishment of religious communities of monks and nuns within some Protestant traditions, particularly those influenced by the more liturgical Protestant reformers rather than the more extreme reformers. This has allowed for communities of nuns to be re-established in some Protestant traditions. Many of these are within the Episcopal Lutheran tradition and the closeness of Lutheranism with Anglicanism its belief and practice has led to local arrangements of intercommunion between the two traditions, such as the Porvo Communion. Religious communities throughout England were destroyed by King Henry VIII when he separated the Church of England from papal authority during the English Reformation. Monasteries and convents were deprived of their lands and possessions, and monastics were forced to either live a secular life on a pension or flee the country. Many Roman Catholic nuns went to France. 
Anglican religious orders are organizations of laity and slash or clergy in the Anglican communion who live under a common rule. The term religious orders is distinguished from holy orders, though many communities do have ordained members. The structure and function of religious orders in Anglicanism roughly parallels that which exists in Roman Catholicism. Religious communities are divided into orders proper, in which members take solemn vows and congregations, whose members take simple vows. With the rise of the Oxford movement in Anglicanism in the early 19th century came interest in the revival of religious life in England. Between 1841 and 1855, several religious orders for nuns were founded, among them the community of St. Mary at Wantage and the community of St. Margaret at East Grinstead. In the United States and Canada, the founding of Anglican religious orders of nuns began in 1845 with the Sisterhood of the Holy Communion in New York. Whilst there is no single central authority for all religious orders, and many member churches of the Anglican Communion have their own internal structures for recognizing and regulating religious orders, some central functions are performed by the Anglican Religious Communities Department at Church House, Westminster, the headquarters of the Church of England's Church Commissioners, General Synod, Archbishop's Council, and National Society. This department publishes the biannual Anglican Religious Life, a world directory of religious orders, and also maintains an official Anglican Communion website for religious orders. Anglican Religious Life defines four categories of community. In the United States of America, there is a clear distinction between orders and communities, as the Episcopal Church has its own twofold definition of religious orders and Christian communities. The Anglican Religious Life Directory affirms this stating this distinction in not used in other parts of the Anglican Communion where communities is also used for those who take traditional vows. In some Anglican orders, there are sisters who have been ordained and can celebrate the Eucharist. There are a plethora of religious orders within the Lutheran churches, such as the Order of Lutheran Franciscans and Daughters of Mary. The Evangelical Sisterhood of Mary, an order of Lutheran nuns, operate a guesthouse a guesthouse for Holocaust survivors in Jerusalem. The St. Bridget of Kildare Benedictine Monastery is a united Methodist double monastery with both monks and nuns. Nuns play an important role in the public's image of religious symbolism. A list of notable works in which nuns play a major part ranges from A Time for Miracles which is hagiography to realistic accounts by Catherine Hume and Monica Baldwin to the blatant nunsploitation of sacred flesh. Works can include those which portray Catholic nuns or non-Catholic such as Black Narcissus, and Minsara Conavu. Many stories that have depicted nuns have gone on to critical and audience acclaim such as Sister Act, Sister Act II, Back in the Habit, and The Sound of Music. These stories have been reproduced in both stage and film. Other examples of nuns in television and film include Sally Field in The Flying Nun, Stephanie Beecham in Sister Kate and Meryl Streep in Doubt. Miss Clavel in the Madeleine book and TV series is the nun of a French Catholic boarding school. Additionally, nuns have been used as antagonists in several stories including Jessica Lange as Sister Jude in American Horror Story or Vanessa Redgrave in The Devils.